Welcome to Really American. I am Michael Hain, Liz Cheney. What can we say about Liz Cheney other than you don't want to incur her wrath? Uh, much like you never want to incur the wrath of Michelle Obama, that, that's like a whole next level. But Liz Cheney, she's a feisty one. As you know, Liz Cheney has been ardently against Donald Trump, one of his bigger critics, stemming from that classic school of Republican thought. I like to call Republican classic. And she was the one who sat on the committee investigating Trump's treasonous crimes on January 6th. Anyway, she came out swinging yesterday when she appeared alongside Kamala Harris at an event in Wisconsin. And what makes this kind of significant is that apparently this event took place in an area which is kind of the birthplace of Republican of uh, um, the Republican Party, excuse me, in Wisconsin, which I always thought was it was born out of Satan's bunghole, but mm, apparently the Republican Party has a lot of roots in this city in Wisconsin. Let's take a look. In this election, a broad coalition has come together to support Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, we may disagree on some things, but we are bound together by the one thing that matters to us as Americans more than any other, and that's our duty to our Constitution and our belief in the miracle and the blessing of this incredible nation. We have a shared commitment, a shared commitment as Americans to ensuring that future generations live in a nation where power is transferred peacefully, where our leaders are men and women of good faith, and where our public servants set aside partisan battles to do what's right for this country. So today I ask all of you here and everyone listening across this great country to join us. I ask you to meet this moment. I ask you to stand in truth to reject the depraved cruelty of Donald Trump. And I ask you instead to help us elect Kamala Harris for president. You see, J.D., that's all you had to say the other night. Respect the peaceful transfer of power. Something that wasn't done, and that's why there's, you know, a job opening for you, as the VP candidate, that's something you couldn't do. I know you used to be a Republican, so maybe you remember. And then now you're a Trumplican, so you completely forgot all that. But that's all you had to do. Let's hear what else Liz had to say. I ask you to stand in truth, to reject the depraved cruelty of Donald Trump. I tell you, I have never voted for a Democrat. But this year, I am proudly casting my vote for Vice President Kamala Harris. Reject the depraved cruelty. That's very meaningful. That's a damning statement. I don't know what universe we're in where a Cheney can make that statement. After all, her dad, who's also endorsing Kamala, he used to have people waterboarded 50,000 times just as a hobby. He shot his friend in the face, you recall. So it is very meaningful. And, you know, I had, um, I had people say to me, well, you know, Mike, how are you so happily welcoming the endorsement of neocons like Liz Cheney? I'm like, well, because do you like want to have future elections? Do you actually want people you love in the LGBT community to like be OK? Do you actually like, you know, like, again, do you want a country still? Would you like that? Then you just have to put on your big boy pants and you kind of have to just Mm, mm, you know, not so emphatically, but kind of emphatically reach across the aisle and say, yes, we welcome you. We welcome your endorsement. However, a hilarious moment. And this is where this is where I say, like Liz Cheney, very feisty and very witty. There's a moment where she really went after Donald Trump, where you know it's going to hit him. And we'll get to that. House leadership. So... In other words, 
I was a Republican even before Donald Trump started spray tanning. <laughs> yeah, hi, 911. Yeah, I would like to report a murder. Yes, the killing of Donald Trump's ego. Burn! She nailed you. If you think you're orange Jesus, well, she just nailed you to the cross. You awful, despicable, pathetic excuse for a human being, nonetheless, a president. By the way, uh, this didn't go over very well with Trumpy Dumpy, as you can imagine. So um, he, you know, did his, you know, typical like, you know, gibberish on Truth Social. And actually, he was confronted and boy. Did he look triggered? Donald Trump claiming those high-profile endorsements could actually hurt Harris. Well, Liz Cheney lost for Congress. Uh, she was terrible. Liz Cheney is a stupid war hawk. All she wants to do is shoot missiles at people. I really think it hurts. I think, frankly, if Kamala... I think they hurt each other. I think they're so bad, both of them. Sending missiles at people? Dude, just the other day in North Carolina... You want to raid, wait, excuse me, wage a full scale war in Iran. You want to bomb Iran. And then uh, what was it last week where you wanted to reinvent or recreate the purge movie on immigrants? All right. God, you are so triggered, man. Your orange reptilian skin is as thin as your hair. Anyway, I guess on the bright side, he's finally able to pronounce Kamala's name properly, right? Because Boy was like, Kamala, Carmela, Corolla. So I guess. That's good. And now I have been rattling my brain. Well, actually, I've been bashing my skull against the wall and trying to figure out how this election could be remotely close. I mean, how Kamala is edging him in national polls, and she is outperforming him in a lot of critical states and some swing states. But again, the national doesn't matter. You know, I'm from New Jersey. It doesn't matter what the hell I think and say. We're going to be in the Democratic column regardless. But what matters and what always matters is states like Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Wisconsin, blah, blah, blah. But the, the, the Northwest, the Midwest, Northern, those states seem to be firmly safe in the column for Kamala. But again, Pennsylvania, you never really know. I mean, it's it's wild to think that, but you never really know. So that's why Liz Cheney, you know... Putting aside her obvious ideological differences with Kamala Harris, it's just huge. I mean, it's just a, a, a great moment that actually illustrates a time when, like, politicians were, like, kind of normal. You know, like, nobody really likes politicians at the end of the day, but, like, they did stuff like this. Like, they would coexist. So that's what kind of makes this a pretty significant moment. And hopefully, and of course, hopefully, results in how they can even be undecided or on the fence. But a lot of these classic Republicans, because there are a lot of them, there's tons of them that just hate Trump. But they just, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know, it's like old school toxic masculinity. I don't know. They just can't <laughs> vote for Kamala, whatever. But hopefully, you know, stuff like this, as it keeps happening, is a tipping point for them. Anyway, I am Michael Hayne. This is Really American. Please subscribe to our channel and check me out on my latest TikTok at Mike Hayne.